please join me in welcoming the writer, director, and editor of Showing Up, Kelly Reichardt. Congratulations on the film, Thanks. Kelly. It's beautiful. This is my second time seeing it. The first time I saw it on a small screen. Tonight I saw it on the big screen, and it was a different experience. Um, I saw connections among the characters. I saw detail. I saw the art in a, in a deeper way. I want to ask you first about Lizzie as an artist, and not just her practice, but the role that art plays in her life, which seems to be both kind of a, a salve and a frustration sometimes. But can you talk a little bit about Lizzie as an artist? Um, let's see. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, the, I should say her art is uh, by the artist Cynthia Lotti, who's a Portland artist. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess I wrote this with Jonathan Raymond, and I guess our idea uh, we had a few different ideas of Lizzie, obviously, over the time. But just the idea was um, to make a film about someone who's compelled to work every day and to make something every day. And, uh, and you know, I assume she's been doing it since she was young and over the course of her life built this practice up um, where her days involve making stuff and uh, as many people are compelled to do and uh, how you fit that in with your life and how you keep doing it even in the times when it's not fun even if you don't really have an audience that goes necessarily beyond your family or community of uh, community I guess whatever your community is and so that was sort of what we were interested in uh, looking at. And so, um, yeah, uh, beyond that, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, it's a comfortable place to be at the table working, and it can be a frustrating place, but also um, it's, a, it's a, you don't have to think about everything else also while you're there, if you can get yourself there. So I think those are some of the... Uh, I really enjoyed the relationship between um, Lizzie and Joe, her landlord, her nemesis in some ways as well. Um, and whenever somebody says, you're the best, you need to worry. <laughs> so I want to ask you a little bit about, about sketching that relationship between the two of them. Joe, who seems so free in her, her life and her art. Yeah, uh, I mean, in all the different ways that uh, making art or films or whatever is an un, well, like a lot of things are unequal in you know whatever it is, your financial situation, you know as far as race, gender, all the ways, and also the a personality versus the easy go easier time with people personality, um, and so yeah, we wanted Joe to we were thinking of Joe as like a kind of more like almost like an athletic. Uh, someone who use her full body to make art. And the, her art is by the artist Michelle Segre, uh, who's, who I had made uh, a short film about, uh, just filming her in her uh, studio working in the Bronx. And I love her work and it, the size it takes up and the boldness of it and the textures of it and all this stuff that was so different than Lizzie being kind of hung over her... Uh, workstation but yeah they um they have different times because they have uh you know such different personalities and um you know which i i can sort of relate to i my right john raymond my writing partner is a um oh he's like it's fine he's a joke yeah which is really best illustrated by uh, the names of our doctors. Oh. And his, his doctor's name is Dr. Breeze, and my doctor's name is Dr. Doom. And <laughs> Come so on, in really? real life, that's true. <laughs> and so um, I think that kind of sums us up pretty well. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you edited the film as well. I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you about why you choose to do that. Um, and, uh, and in particular, you know, there's a sequence at the end, her opening, uh, Lizzie's opening, 
And uh, that to me is not just written and shot and performed in a certain way, but I loved how it was cut as well. And I found that the, I found that the, the tension really plays out through the editing. Can you talk a little bit about editing the film? Sure. Um, cutting around a flying bird is, uh, it just fell right together, piece by piece. <laughs> um, actually, sort of in the family section, more than I would have expected. But, um, but yeah, I guess it kind of goes hand in hand with uh, at this point. I've been doing it for so long for, you know, figuring out how I would shoot. You know, Chris Blavelt, the cinematographer I work with, we talk about the cut as often as anything else, you know, and figuring out how it'll go. So, I don't know, editing kind of helps me um, figure out how I want to shoot. Not that it helps on that film, but just uh, in general, I guess. Um, I mean, I originally started because by the time I would shoot a film, there was no money left to hire anybody. So I did it myself, and now I'm uh, used to it and don't really want to give it up. I, I really like the process. So, yeah. It really feels all of a piece, the, all of the different elements yeah. in terms of the craft of the film as well. Yeah. Uh, we have some time for your questions. Oh, right away. Okay. <laughs> we will start here, and then we'll go further um, back. Go ahead. Sadness. Yeah. Question is about yeah. Michelle Williams and how yeah. when she came into the project. Right. Um, I mean, we've worked together on uh, we've done three other films together. So, uh, uh, you know, it for a long time. I'm just trying to think of people in my life that I know, different parts of people or that I've read about, and try to put off thinking about actors for as long as possible. And um, and how I. I mean, I saw Michelle, I mean, I've worked with her a lot, so I already know what she's like, and I really like working with her. But she, um, when she did uh, Vernon Fossey, I was like, oh, wow, she's got so much, I I could be doing more with Michelle <laughs> than I uh, let her. She's obviously got so much more to give. Um, but I didn't directly, quickly make the connection to her as this character until I stumbled upon an image of Lee Bonacue, the sculptor, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, I get it, yeah, it could be um, Michelle. Um, uh, Michelle looks a lot, a little bit like Lee, like Lee Bonacue is a sort of uh, a sculptor who's, we, we, it was the first thing I sent to Michelle, and I sent her uh, 10 pounds of clay, and, um, and she, so she started at home just getting uh, just playing around with it and started taking Zoom sort of tutorials with Cynthia. And that went on for months. And then eventually she came to Portland and worked in the studio with, uh, with Cynthia in the weeks before we shot. Likewise, Hong was working with Michelle Segre. And the other artist whose work is in the film is uh, Jessica Jackson Hutchins, who does the glass that's in the that Heather Lawless, the visiting artist, is has in her classroom. I mean, there's a lot of art in the film. We got people really generous in lending us their art, but those are the sort of ones that characters, the, the art was all sort of cast before the characters because I couldn't really figure out who these people were until I understood what their art was and sort of what their, and these were all people who I had access to their practice and I could visit regularly and get my own head around it first, um, and what type of person would make this, you know, stuff, yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's go back here. Uh, no, behind? Oh. <laughs> uh, there's someone in the middle back there who had a hand up, no? Okay, let's go to you then. <laughs> Yeah. Full name of the show. I, oh shoot! I wish you wouldn't ask me that because I can't remember right now. <laughs> um, it goes on and on. And John Raymond and Michelle Segre uh, came up with that, and I really didn't see it till it was already up on the wall. And so it was, yeah. Uh, but Michelle's 
names for her stuff are pretty up. So her and John together actually came up with the name. And I wish I could remember the name of the entire thing, but I can't right now. But just to say that, you know, I told, I was telling uh, Hong and Michelle, like, you're working with these artists, but they are not the character. You know, the characters are this, I mean, it's forever progressing who these people are and whatever. But it was kind of impossible for them to not absorb because the making of stuff is just just to not absorb things that work so personal. So, yeah, I'm sure that's all. I'm sure they are in the mix of, uh, but not, I don't think the whole, like if you met Michelle, I don't think you'd think anything of Hong or likewise Cynthia uh, to Lizzie. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there was, uh, we were going to go back here. Let me just see if there's anybody else. As, um, Poor guy. Okay, let's go down front. Go ahead. Hi, how are you? Uh, so this is actually the first film I've seen of yours, and I'm curious as to how you get such sort of, like, you have, you have characters that feel like just people, and I'm wondering if that happens during rehearsal or if, if there's a lot of spontaneity for, for that. Yeah. I'll just repeat the question sure. briefly. Um, it's about uh, your characters feeling like just people, and does that, at what point does that happen in the process? He didn't say the part where he said he didn't see any of the other films yet. I did um, not. Wow. He'll get to it. Um, and uh, the, uh, oh, well, I just spaced on the rest of the question. Um, was what? Oh, they feel right, they're so natural, yeah. Because it's just like Michael Lee, we uh, work for a year. No, we don't rehearse, honestly, it's the opposite. We don't rehearse. Um, uh, in all the films, there's always some preliminary, there's work for people to do, like in this case, learning how to make the art. And, uh, and there's that, and there's being in the place, and like the school where we shot, the Oregon College of Arts and Crafts, which is this beautiful arts college, over 100 years old, super important in the Pacific Northwest in the 60s and 70s for pottery and uh, uh, ceramics, which shuttered its doors uh, in 2019, I think. So, um, uh, sadly, uh, but we had that space, and our production offices were in the school also. So we were in the space, and all this art was, the school was empty when we got there completely. And so um, the art department brought in all these young artists in Portland. And so people were making work in all the rooms after we decided what would be going on in each room. And, um, and then the young actors that came in, just hanging out all the time, like they're in our COVID bubble, they have to be there all the time. They started make, learning how to do the stuff. So work was being made, and the school just became this functional place. It was very, you know, gave you the feeling that like someone should make a school here because people really like doing stuff here. So it, it just became this very alive, um, place so I think for those actors also they have stuff to do and if you um, and so but we really don't know what the dynamic between the actors is going to be until we're doing the scenes that's like a surprise to all of us and um, and then you put animals in the mix and uh, it all so you know hopefully people just have a lot to with you know uh, between the th things they're doing and, and, you know, have a lot to respond to and, uh, and that sort of, and you get in the clothes, clothes have a lot to do, you're walking around in your Crocs and it all, that, I think that's where it really comes together is in the Crocs, but, um, you know, I don't know, like acting to me is kind of mysterious and I try not to tread on anybody and uh, give whatever information anybody wants. And like Michelle likes to talk a lot of things through and Hong doesn't like, I don't think she ever asked me a question. So um, in keeping with their character personalities, yeah, so. Uh, just related to that, I wanna ask you uh, briefly about, you mentioned the, the relationship between the characters and how that comes out through yeah. what they do. Um, there are some great films from film history that are about boundaries between women, you know, Bergman and, and Altman and others as well. But I was also thinking of John Micklin Silver and a little bit of Chantal Ackerman, and, and there's something really um, nuanced in the relationship between them where there's, there's clearly a connection, but they're also trying to kind of navigate the boundaries between them. Can you talk a little bit about that part of it? Sure. Um, 
I know about this because I was a couch hopper for five and a half years in New York City, and I crossed all the boundaries with all my friends. And um, in, for different friends, the line is in different places, but I eventually crossed them all. And, um, and uh, I think the, for me, the landlord, uh, tenant, uh, even now I'm, I live in a condo and I'm getting, it's the first time I've ever lived in a condo and I, the, the HOA meetings, oh my God, the power structure of the <laughs> And um, so there is, a, there is a lot to, uh, for them to navigate. Uh, and, and I think they both really, uh, and in a small town, you know, with a limp, you know, a lot of people, and I think a lot of small towns are probably like this, people making work, and you don't want to look at what your neighbor's doing because you don't want their stress to be your stress, and, and why are they getting, you know, the best example being when the biennial people, scouts, come to into a small town. It's like tension, you know, you don't want, you know, you like each other's work, but you can feel the... Um, competition there. Yeah, there is. There's only so much, you know, with, I remember being a young filmmaker when we all, you know, a bunch of, I shared an office with a bunch of filmmakers and we all really liked each other's stuff and we all really liked each other. And, you know, I was really aware that they had trust funds and I didn't. And I was like, and they were really generous to me and really helpful to me. But, you know, you're constantly, and I'm sure they were measuring whatever. I'm not sure what I had, but... <laughs> Oh, you're lucky you, you're a woman <laughs> in the 90s trying to make films. They're probably very jealous of that. Um, but, you know, whatever it is, like, you have a penis, you have a trust fund, or whatever the thing is, it gets in your way, but ultimately um, you're each other's allies also, and, they're, um, and having a community is really um, the best thing that comes with making art, as far as I'm concerned, at least with me making films, like the community that I make films with. Um, so it's complicated. It gets complicated, yeah. Thank you. Time for a couple of more questions. We'll go here. Yes, right there. Um, so we talked a lot about like, characterization and writing, uh, but ultimately, you know, we talked a lot about how people are yeah. Oh, yeah. Questions about the um, opening shots and then the, the shots near the end with the wires in the sky. Oh, the wires in the sky. Is that what you oh, meant? Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. got it. Um, I, uh, I always like to mention Mia, who's doing the braiding at the end, because she was uh, our head PA and she taught everybody how to use the looms, because the loom lady got COVID. And so, luckily, someone that was working on the movie and um, yeah, so anyway, but the wires, um, uh, well, I, they're both, okay, the shot, you know, we did these like really nice uh, dolly shots through, those are Cynthia's uh, watercolors that she does before she does a sculpture. And so, you know, again, this idea of process. But, uh, and then it was really, uh, another day of just grabbing a bunch of stuff like before we wrap this space up, I got these rougher shots that are in the movie. And um, I remember the first cut I showed, an early, early cut of the film to Todd Haynes and his note was, um, you know, the other great thing about community and make the people you make art with is you get good feedback from them. And, um, and he said, oh, Art making is really messy. Why is it so neat? And I was like, oh, yeah, Robert, that's a good note, right? So um, I ended up uh, going into like the B footage role and uh, trying to find all the spots where things were rougher. And uh, that ended up working quite nicely for the opening where the paintings are. And then just the chance to get to meet Lizzie and see her where she works, you know, kind of a classic kind of here I am and this is my space. Um, and, uh, and I don't know if you noticed the introduction of the pigeon sounds there, but. Uh, oh yes, I did. 
<laughs> pigeon's <laughs> eye view at yeah, the end. Yeah, the pigeons are under the table, and the girls are laid out. So it's really all in the first shot. And then the, um, so uh, keeping with the messiness of things, the uh, wire shots, I went and, uh, you know, I had Andre, I wasn't expecting to have music by Andre, but he's out playing his flute all the time, this wooden flute, whenever he wasn't on camera. So you could always hear Andre's flute. And so I asked him uh, if I could just record some of it. So we did like a field recording, literally in the field at the school on the last day when we were packing out of the school. And he just stood out in the field and played for 45 minutes and I recorded him. So I had that in my uh, bag of tricks in the editing room. And I had was gonna do the wires, but uh, when I put the wires to the flute, I like, oh my God, has kind of an Ozu feel to it. So I went and shot, reshot the wires just to get more exactly what I wanted, and to and to sort of backwards use shoot to the score that Andre had made, and so that's sort of how that piece came to uh, came to be. Um, I don't know, everything's such a long process because I think originally it was like all gonna just be through trees. And then when I was scouting, I got tied into these wires out, you know, just to make, get, try to get across that area where her show is clearly like not downtown and sort of out of the way kind of thing. Um, so I don't, yeah, I don't know, that's, so that's how that part came about. <laughs> okay, we're almost out of time. Um, I'm just gonna ask, mm. is there a woman who has a question? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Thank you. You're, the question, please ask this on behalf of all women. Go on, no pressure. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about that because I see someone's recording and I, that's, a, that's a, I don't really wanna talk about that because you know, that gives away so much of the movie. Oh, so really, any men? Question from any men? <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> sorry, I, I don't wanna talk about that because you can understand why there's a man right there with a camera. <laughs> yeah. You, Animals, um, I like animals. Uh, they're, they're more fun to hang out with than they are to shoot with, to be honest. Um, uh, I mean, they're, it's time consuming, and um, uh, each, kind of animal, uh, each kind of animal is different. Cats harder than dogs, as you would expect. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, I, animals do, you know, they're part of the story. I mean, I I'm, I'm immediately went to production because you immediately think of like how hard it is to work with animals. But when you're writing, uh, you know, especially John Raymond, he's not gonna be there. He doesn't care, <laughs> he'll make an animal do anything. And then the animal juggled some uh, rings of fire. <laughs> you know, good luck. But, um, but they're, um, I think they're, uh, Say a, I don't know. I, I find my relationship with animals to be so different than my relationship to people to state something obvious, and I suspect it's that way for everybody. Um, and uh, in one, it, you know, you really brings out the least guarded part of people uh, because what's, you know, there's no judgment with the animals. Um, you bring the food, they're happy. You come home, they're happy. Whatever you do, it's so easy to please. Um, but uh, so it's a nice doorway into that. It's a nice way uh, uh, when you're working to keep things in the moment and, you know, as far as having to respond to something that's not planned. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a whole, you know, there's, uh, it feels funny to say this because I've been on these boards all week at, Bard College where I teach. And for some reason, students keep coming in and they on the boards they tell us what they're interested in. And I don't know why this was the thing this year. They were all talking about, hu I'm really interested in humans. 
I really, I want to work with humans. I want to, I'm interested in doing, uh, I'm interested in humanism. It was just like, well, what's, what, <laughs> what meeting did you all go to? And just, as opposed to what? But I will say, now that I'm thinking about it, because I've been thinking about this human question, um, uh, it is a whole different way to show, you know, someone who has complicated relationships with people can have really a different kind of relationship with animals or just their presence and how you get used to them or how they become communal um, pets or um, burdens, responsibility, um, uh, which they are also. Um, so uh, I'll just close with this because this is, um, on the when we finish shooting this film on the, and you kind of have an adrenaline drop after you finish making a movie because you've, you know, you're just so tweaked all the time. And um, uh, I went out into the world, and I didn't have, you know, it wasn't four in the morning. I just went out in the world by myself and got my cup of coffee, and I walked to the park, and a bird dropped out of a, a baby bird dropped out of a tree right at my feet. And I was like, wow. Do I have to deal with this bird? This goddamn bird. <laughs> What's my responsibility to this bird? <laughs> Fortunately, another woman came along and she said, I've got a shoebox, I'll go back and get it. And I said, Great, I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> you know, so um, anyway, that was the day after shooting. Um, thank you so much for having me and for uh, coming out to the movies. Uh, Appreciate it, and thank you, Cameron. Thank yeah, you. Please join me yeah. in thanking Kelly Reichardt. <laughs>